All right. Hello, everyone. Divine Sorcerer here with you. I want to start out saying I know it's been a while. I haven't been on. While things have been very busy, uh, I have had time to work on a few things, and a few things have come to my attention. Um, so as you see on your screen here, there's a star. I want to talk about the pentagram. I want to talk about the star. Now, I am not in no way, shape, or form an astrologist or an alchemist certified, that is. I don't have a PhD or a, a fancy little degree or anything like that. I'm self-taught. Um, but I have been doing this research for quite a long time, been on this journey, and I have noticed a bunch of things. So I know people get interested when I start talking, no matter where I go, whether it be to a flea market or whether it be to a grocery store, or even to a doctor's office. Whenever I start speaking on the things that I know and the things that I've researched and what, what I've come to find out just through living this, this path, people are attentive. They want to know. And, and so it's inspired me to do this video. So let's look at this. It's a star, right? Most of us know it as a pentagram. And so a five-sided transparent star, often within a circle, is one of the oldest markings known to humankind. Dating back to Europe as far as 8,000 years ago, the pentagram is a symbol fraught with mystery, intrigue, and meaning. It has been the symbol of various religious and nations, from Christianity to Islam, from Morocco to Ethiopia, to ancient Jerusalem. In modern times, the pentagram has been used by Wiccans and distorted further for the use of Satanists though one urge to presume a connection between the two. The five points, now bear with me because I've been away from this, so it's going to take me a minute. All right, so the five points of the pentagram usually have five different meanings. For example, for the Wiccans, the five points represent earth, wind, fire, water, and spirit, spirit occupying the top and most important point. However, these values change from culture to culture. And so the pentagram, or the five-pointed star, shows up in many ancient traditions, right? A lot of groups will claim that they had it first, but it's hard to know which is right. So let's first get a better understanding between the both, okay? What is a pentagram? Again, as we look at the picture, a pentagram is a five-pointed star that can be drawn with a single continuous line and is commonly used in spell work. The word pentagram comes from the Greek words penta, meaning five, and gramma, meaning letter. So each of the five points of the star are associated with a different element, direction, or meaning, depending on the tradition and context in which it is used. Now, let's go to our next star. What is a pentacle? Well, a pentacle is a symbol that consists of, five, of a five-pointed star enclosed within a circle. The word pentacle comes from the Greek word penta, meaning five, and the Latin word circulus, meaning circle. It has also been linked with the Middle French word pentacle, around 1328, which meant talisman. Now, I also find that a little funny because when you look at pentacle and, and pent, you know, pentacol, that's a lot close to the Pentecostal church, right? You would think. It's, you know, just, just a little hint there. So some people use pentacles as tools for ritual and magical purposes, such as casting spells or invoking certain energies or spirits. A pentacle talisman, especially an iron pentacle, can be a very powerful cleansing tool for cleansing tarot decks or crystals. Many pagans use a pentacle and an altar tool to hold items that will be ritually consecrated. So, a pentagram has been used for a wide variety of purposes over the course of human history. Pentagrams have been used to ward off evil. Now we have also the inverted pentagram, right? The inverted pentagram with two points projecting upwards is used for calling forth evil and the unseen forces of other realms, a reversed pentagram. 
is a symbol of evil and rich and it attracts sinister forces because it overturns the proper order of things and demonstrates the triumph of matter over spirit and so those are a little bit of differences on different parts of the stars and how it got rearranged and whatnot and so in Greek mythology the five corners are where the seeds of Kronos are placed within the earth in order for the cosmos to appear in Napoleonism the pentagram was said to have been used as a symbol or a sign of recognition by the Pythagoreans who called the pentagram Hugia meaning health so now when we look at this right let's let's just take a minute and, and look at the Pythagoreans let's talk about the Pythagoreans the Pythagoreans right named so after Pythagoras in 580 500 BCE around that era he was a mathematician who encouraged his followers to seek out truth and knowledge they were driven underground and used the pentagram to identify themselves to each other signing letters and communications with it during this time the pentagram represented the five points of the human being. So let me get that here. Five points of the human being right there. All right. The two feet, the two hands, and the one head. The ancient Pythagorean pentagram was drawn more so like this. Okay. It was drawn with two points up and represented the doctrine of the Pentimikos. The doctrine of the Pentimikos comes to us through none other than Pythagoras. Okay. Or the original document by Pharisees is lost to history, I think. But uh, here's Pharisees of Sars. The doctrine of the Pentimikos, a philosophy told as creation mythology, is attributed to a 6th century BCE pre psychiatric philosopher named Pharisees of Cyrus. In the Petimikos, the interplay between pre-cosmic time, meaning Kronos, being Zas, and what lies beneath the earth, Chitinoe, results in the creation of the cosmos. In brief, a structure made of five recesses, a Petimikos, is an inseminated, giving rise to the offspring of the gods. This element, however, occurs in the midst of an archetype drama that pits light and dark and order and chaos against each other. Some, com some commentators speculate that Chitney is the Pentimikos and is the prototype of the goddess Persephone, or Kor, otherwise known as Hecate, right? And so... What does the five-pointed star symbolize? The pentagram, right? They say that the pentagram is a symbol of the goddess Kor, Persephone, Persephone also known as Persephone. Uh, she is best known as the goddess of spring, right? One of mythology's most popular characters, her father, was Zeus, god of the sky and thunder, while her mother was Demeter, goddess of agriculture, and the harvest. Now think about what I just said there, okay? Let me reread that. Just, just keep this in mind. They referred to the star as Persephone. She was best known as the goddess of spring. Okay? Now remember that because this is important later on down the line here. One of mythology's most popular characters. Her father was Zeus, god of the sky and thunder, while her mother was Demeter, goddess of agriculture and the harvest. Known as the star of knowledge, the Pythagoreans revered, revered this symbol as the pent pentalpha, the letter A, called the birth letter, interlaced five times. And as you can see here, if you make an A five times, it makes none other than the pentagram, right? So, Hygieia. In the Greek religion, the goddess of health, the oldest traces of her cult are at Titan, west of Corinth, where she was worshipped together. Now, get this. She was worshipped together with Asclepius, the god of medicine. Now, this is, this is you know, some intriguing stuff, guys. All right. And so, I believe they saw the pentagram as a mathematical perfection, which would later come to be known as... Let me close this one out. 
the golden ratio. Now, <laughs> real quick for those unfamiliar, unfamiliar with what the golden ratio is, the golden ratio, also known as the golden number or the golden proportion or the divine proportion, is a ratio between two numbers that equals approximately 1.618 usually written as the Greek letter pi. It is strongly associated with the, let me show you here, the Fibonacci sequence, okay? A series of numbers wherein each number is added to the last, as you see here in the picture, right? And so this is for another journey. We can take this to the whole new rabbit hole at another time. Just note the importance of the last couple sentences that I read you, right? So the pentagram, what is known with a good amount of certainty, however, is that the pentagram was the main image in the logotype or official seal of the city of Jerusalem during the period of 300 to 150 BCE. It is a beautiful positive symbol of not just my spirituality, but a lot of other people's spirituality and that of many of our ancestors, right? And so now... Let's talk about the birth of the five-pointed star. Where did the five-pointed star come from? Again, this is a difficult question to answer. We see evidence of the five-pointed star being used throughout history. There are examples of it on Babylonian pottery, and as a recognized glyph in Egyptian hieroglyphics, it has also appeared on Greek coins. Five-pointed stars are present to us all the time. To determine which five-point star has magical associations, we need to begin to unpick exactly what is the meaning of a five-pointed star or the five-pointed stars we see throughout history, right? And so this meaning varies between cultures and throughout history and will differ depending on your values and beliefs. So again, what does the five-pointed star symbolize? It is the most well-recognized symbol of the pentad. All right, I know. What's the pentad, right? All right, so here's the pentad, right? And if we can think back a little bit, we can understand that monad is the point. Dayad is the line, composed of two points. Triad is three points and encloses space as the plane. Tetrad introduces the fourth point and takes us from the second dimensions to the third dimensions. It then follows in number philosophy that with the addition of the fifth point, the pentatad takes us into the cosmic realm of life itself. So in the great mystery of numbers, which we trace back to the ancient Greeks, the pentatad signifies to us the next level of cosmic design. And the five-pointed star is the most well-known structure of the pentatad, as you see here on, on, the, on the graph, right? So the five-pointed star indicates to us the pentad's presence and its regeneration qualities and associations. But where did the five-pointed star come from? Where did it come from, right? So despite many Egyptian glyphs being images of, like, say, nature, like owls, think owl, leaf, cow, right? Hieroglyphics, the ancient hieroglyphics, wasn't a pictorial language like emojis. Each glyph or group of glyphs represented spoken sounds that made up sentences. The five-pointed star in hieroglyphs is a vocal sound that appears as part of a group of glyphs that signify monthly festivals. Ancient Egypt was a time when awareness of the moon cycles and growing phases was paramount. So a language of symbols that kept track of these likely emerged. What is the star with the circle around it, right, that we see in ancient Egyptian hieroglyphs? In ancient Egyptian hieroglyphs, the star with the circle around it represents another world or spirit place. And a quarter circle around it, like I just showed you, okay, and the quarter circle around it, around the star, is a half a monthly festival. So there's something interesting here, okay? I'd like to point out... History has produced evidence of the Egyptians being advanced in their concept of maths and geometry. The symbol of the five-pointed star appeared in their written language, but not as a numerical value. 
It wasn't a numeral. Ancient Egyptian spiritual understanding of numbers would have been tightly connected to their philosophy and religion, likely because of the dependence on the cyclical rhythms, right? So now we fast forward from the Egyptians to the Renaissance, and the star with the circle around it was referred to as the pentacle and held correspondences with neo-paganism and the occult. Agrippa was a scholar in the 1400s who combined traditional Greek philosophy, divine order of the planets with that of current Christianity into his own type of magic mysticism, which still influences today. And so now, knowing all of this and analyzing everything, I suspect the reason has to do... Let me find it here. But this here... I suspect that the reason it has to do with the planet Venus. Now hear me out, right? If you map the apparent position of Venus in the sky every night over an eight-year period, you will find that it traces a pentagram shape. Here it is on the, on the, on the screen for you, okay? It, it traces a pentagram-shaped path. Different ancient cultures who watched the sky noticed this and were impressed. They decided the pattern must be something special. Uh, oh, how right they were. The Babylonians may have been the first to notice this because they were the culture that really formulated the rules of astrology and the basics of astronomy. But the Babylonians were not the only culture to do so. You had the Sumerians and the Egyptians. And long before that, you had the Mayans, the Aztecs, and the Incas as well. Which leads us into astrology side of things like we're, we're now going to go to the astrology i showed you the earth and the mythology now, now let's go to the astrology side of things now we can get lost going into egyptian and astrology and that whole rabbit hole but quickly let's take a look okay the egyptians as i showed you back here used astrology for the times of the seasons but also for the practice of medicine Aha, kicker right because we see that not only does the star show up in the heavens for us all to see right but it also is found here on earth uh, da, 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 da. okay and with that i want to add us uh pagans us us practicing witches we have this thing called as above, so below, as within, so without, as the universe, so the soul. As you can see, the star of Aquarius there with that saying, right? Thank you, Baphomet. Let's look at the stars in nature. Since our ancient Egyptian kin knew this knowledge, they knew as above, so below, and they knew as within, so without, as just they did as the universe, so our soul, right? So now let's look at the five-pointed star in nature. We have, you know, uh, like a cactus-looking plant. I forget what they're called, succulent, in the shape of a five-pointed star. All right. You have this kind of plant. Funny. It represents stars, right? And then you've got this plant. Geometry shaped like a star. Surprise, surprise. Now we have fruit. Fruit shaped like a star. Seeds, just like the Egyptian symbols of the star. We have what is called a starfish. So now we're getting into animals, not just plants, but animals. Starfish, right? And then we have, of course, this. This is a seed. It's called star anise. And it is a seed pod from the fruit of the Elysium vernum plant, an evergreen shrub native to southwest China. The star anise pod, which is shaped like a star, hence its name, has an average of eight points, each containing a single pea-sized seed. And not just seeds of plants, but actual plants themselves. Look here, right? Another case in point. Native American plants in the genus Eureba are known for their star-shaped flowers. 
The flowers can be found in various colors, but most often appear yellow, white, or red. Therefore, they are sometimes called starry aruba or aruba stars. Star-shaped flowers are bilaterally symmetrical flowers. The five-pointed star is the signature of five. Okay? This signature or archetype can be found in other forms of five too. When we see a five-pointed star in nature, we will also see the pentagon. They are one and the same. Where one is present, the other is implied, or vice versa. Both are the archetype of the pentatad. But moreover, let's look into the spiritual side of things, right? Because now we're going to get, you know, in, into the spiritual being part of things. Let's look at facts, okay? Because... When we look into the spiritual side of things, we know that the star fits into the heavens. It fits in here on earth with the, with the plants and then the animals. We know it has had many different meanings over time and throughout the ages, right? But let's look at facts because that's where it's at. What are we made of, guys? What are we made of? Well, as Carl Sagan once stated, we're made of star stuff. And I love that, how true that is, right? Stars that go supernova are responsible for creating many of the elements of the periodic table, including those that make up the human body. Planetary scientists and stardust expert Dr. Ashley King explains, It is totally 100% true. Nearly all the elements in the human body were made in a star, and many have come through several supernovas. And so we see that most of the elements that make up the human body were formed in stars. So are we really made of stardust? Most of the elements of our bodies were formed in stars over the course of billions of years and multiple star lifetimes. However, it's also possible that some of our hydrogen, which makes up roughly 9.5% of our bodies, and the lithium, which our body contains in very tiny trace amounts, originated from the Big Bang. Now, yes, as you see on the screen, it's a star. It's a supernova, right? It's the Big Bang. Well, the history of the Big Bang theory began with the Big Bang's development from observations and theoretical considerations much of the theoretical work in cosmology, cosmology now involves extensions and reinforcements to the basic Big Bang model. The theory itself was originally formalized by Father Georges Lementary in 1927. Hubble's law of the expansion of the universe provided fundamental support for the theory. Right? So let's take a look at how the five-pointed pentagram links to the human body, right? Oh, wrong, wrong one, wrong one. Uh, there we go. There we go. All right. All right. So we see Venus goes in the shape of the pentagram in the heavens every eight years and that we really are made of stardust. So my opinion, this was the birth of the star, the pentagram, noticed by many ancient cultures and stolen and misrepresented over time. And so I want to point one thing out. I want to make is what, all right, so the moon plays a role here on earth with the rising and the lowering of the tides of the ocean, correct? And it is said to help metaphorically with the blood and other watery substances in us, as well as Earth, hence the lowering of the tides on the Earth, right? So is it that far-fetched that the other planets also play a role in our everyday way of life? Can we help to maintain our flesh suit with the knowledge of the ancients? Medical astrology, okay? Traditionally known as intromathematics or aethromathematics is an ancient applied branch of a style astrology based mostly on Melothesia, 
the association of various parts of the body, diseases and drugs with the nature of the sun, the moon, planets, and the 12 astrological signs. The underlying basis for medical astrology, astrology itself, is considered to be pseudoscience, as there is no scientific basics, basis for its core beliefs until now. Let's look at the zodiac signs and the body parts and the, the ruling of them, right? As you see here, it's a little map. And as you can see, I took the, the wheel, the astrology wheel, and I split it in half. Just like the uh, waves of how the, the sun and the moon go, okay? Just how like magnetic and electrical waves go. I did it with the human body. I split it in half. You had the microchasm and the macrochasm, right? Now, we have houses 1 through 12. Houses 1 through 6 go from the head to the waist. 7 through 12 from the waist to the feet, okay? Let's go over these quick. If you need a bigger chart, I'll send you one because I know it's probably hard to see on the screen. But nevertheless, so we have Aries, right? Aries rules the head, the face. The superennials, the adrenal gland, the eyes, the teeth, the tongue, the hair, the arteries, and the blood, right? So we know Aries, of course, is the ram. She's the first house. Then we go to Taurus, which is the bull, okay? Well, Taurus rules the neck, the throat, the jaw, the sensory organs, the vocal cords, the tonsils, and the thyroid. Next, we go to the third house, Gemini. Gemini rules the hands, the arms, the lungs, the thymus, the respiratory and nervous system, the shoulders, the bronchial tubes, and the capillaries, right? Next one, cancer. Cancer rules your breast, your stomach, your gallbladder, memory glands, body containers that retain water, diaphragm, womb, lymphatic system, vagina, and the right eye, okay? Leo, however, rules the heart, the back, the spine, and major arteries, circulation, blood pressure, and the left eye. Virgo, intestines, abdominal, spleen, pancreas, esophagus, intestines, digestive system, eyes, and ears. Libra, lower back, kidneys, bladder, veins, sense of touch, insulin regulation, endocrine system, or endocrine system, uh, glands, urinary system. Scorpio, deals with genitals, colon, rectum, uh, reproductive and elimination systems, prostate, colon, urethra, pubic bone, and the urinary tract. Sagittarius deals with the hips and the thighs, the liver, the lymphatic system, pituitary gland, sacrum, and lumbar vertebrae. Capricorn deals with the knees, the bones, the skin, the teeth, skeletal systems, the body, hair, uh, ligaments, tendons, joints, knees, and spleen. So on. Aquarius, calves, calves, veins, circulatory system, ankles, forearms, pineal gland, blood, circulation system. Pisces. The very last one. Feet, lymphatic system, pituitary gland, hormone production, and pineal gland, melatonin secretion. And so, if we look at the above mentioned, we can see how the zodiac, along with the human body, work in synchronicities, right? Let's talk about that, synchronicities. I know I'm getting off from the star, but it's, this all has to do with the star and the human body. This all has to do, it's, it's fair. If you just understand it, right? So synchronicity, the simultaneous occurrence of events which appear sig significantly related to, but have no discernible casual connection. And so with the synchronicities, we also see how the universe has a role in our timing and how we can thus maintain our health through astrology and ancient medicine, right? And re it, it really falls along the line of first changing your diet. You see, I realized that the foods we eat today, a lot of it is garbage. It's processed and filled with GMOs and other senseless things that we don't need, right? You know, there's this saying, and I know, I I'm getting off track again, right? That happens a lot more often than you think. But let's look at this, right? Not really is it all one and the same. You see, as above, so below. As within, so without. As the universe, so the soul. 
these are very, very deep words. And so in changing our daily diet comes, are you ready? Shadow work, guys, right? Shadow work. A deep analyzation of yourself. It's really the first hermetic principle. And let's take a quick look at this hermetic principle, right? It's called mentalism. Now, mentalism is the all is mind. The universe is mental. It's the hermetic principle of mentalism. It teaches that all things are created from and expand from the mind. They are the result of your thoughts and emotions. The more you do to get in touch with your mind and connect it with a greater cosmic conscience, the more control you'll have over your life. Right Now that leads me into the second hermetic principle which is correspondence, right? Well, the principle of correspondence, again, is the as above, so below. As below, so above, right? The microchasm, macrochasm, which I showed you on that chart. This principle embodies the truth that there is always a correspondence between the laws and phenomena of the various planes of being and life. Which leads me now to the third hermetic principle, Okay, of vibration. The hermetic principle of vibration is the third principle of the hermetic philosophy, which states that motion is manifest in everything in the universe. It means that nothing is at rest and everything moves. It vibrates and it circles. The difference between different manifestations of matter, energy, mind, and even spirit result largely from varying rates of vibration. So again, we can get into this rabbit hole and go down this rabbit hole. But ultimately, as I showed you back here, we're talking about vibration. We're still on the star. You know, like it's got a lot to do with astrology. Let's talk about the human body and astrology. Let's talk about hermetics. Let's talk about chemistry. Let's talk about biochemistry and geometry. They say there is no basis for proof of this stuff that, that it doesn't work. Or that, you know, there's no proof that this stuff works, right? Well, ladies and gentlemen, I'm here to tell you, and I emphasize that I am, I am, I am living, walking, breathing proof that this very much does work. As I've been using this method and living this way for four years now, I have doctor's records from before when I was felt like I was being used as an experiment and given poison to. When I was enlightened and given knowledge to care for myself through the gods and the knowledge they provided me, look, I ain't gonna lie, this has been a very, very long journey. Very long journey. Many trials, many errors. You know, it's been almost 14 years since the start of my research. Right? I've risked going to jail for trying to maintain my health through my belief, through what I'm, I'm showing here, right? Through religion in the time of a pandemic. I have changed the way I eat, the way I think, and the way I react. I choose, you know, to make life more beautiful through nature. And uh, most important, I researched. I was willing to learn what others told me was evil, sinister, dark. I learned it more so when I jumped into the paranormal investigating. And you see, that decision there set me up for the path that I'm on now, to who I am today, and to what I have to show others that may be interested in a different lifestyle, a path of freedom and knowledge and truth, right? And so... I'm not going to drag this video out much longer. It's already been a half hour. But I felt the need to show you how the star was very important from the beginning of time. Not just here on Earth, but through the cosmos. Like, it was a, a star symbol. The star symbol. Like, most important symbol. Why? Because it can tell a lot about us. And a lot about the above that's above so below right and so i want to just leave you with my motto okay it's a very enlightening quote the darkest dark is the brightest light 
a lot of the inspiration of this video is I would like to dedicate this video to my youngest daughter whom I lost to suicide in 2021. Her name was Felicity Star Williams. Rest in peace, my child. From 8202 to 1124 of 21. She's gone but never forgotten. She was my shooting star. She was the one that inspired me to do this video. And the star is a very sacred symbol. All right, no matter where you use it. Um, and, and like I said, you can get further deeper into this, and, and we will. Okay, I'll explain more in detail when I break metaphorically down what all this means as we go further into the journey of what I call my life. All right. You guys have a good night, and I hope you got something out of this. I look forward to making the next video. Have a blessed night.